Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Renzo here. Mr. McElroy has relinquished control of the show to me once more because he's away on double secret auto line business. But don't ask me because I don't know nothing. And if you're wondering who I am, well, I'll give you three guesses. Hint, it's right down there. Anyway, enough of that. We've got some news to get through, and after that, I'll share my recipe for the perfect sports car. First up, some news from Dearborn. On Monday, we told you Ford would be offering a performance version of the Explorer. Well, now it's official. The Explorer Sport is powered by a 3.5 liter V6 EcoBoost engine that cranks out an estimated 350 horsepower and 350 pounds foot of torque. No surprises here. Four wheel drive is standard. Fuel economy is projected to be 18 miles per gallon in the city and 22 on the highway. The chassis was stiffened for better handling and larger brakes were added to enhance stopping performance. The exterior has its own unique cues most notably, the Explorer name is spelled out on the front hood, just like on the new Flex. The Explorer Sport will be out later this year. In related crossover news, Chevy showed off a refreshed version of the Traverse. Look closely at the family hauler's front end because it's the new face of Chevy crossovers. Inside, the Traverse now features soft first surfaces on the instrument and door panels, ambient lighting, and a new center stack. It's powered by the same 3.6 liter six shooter as the current model. The new Traverse will be available later this year. Meanwhile, over in France, Renault just revealed its new people hauler, a larger version of the Kangoo called the Grand Kangoo, really? Which can seat up to seven people. If hauling cargo is a must, its second and third row seats can fold flat for even more room. This compact vanlet is powered by 1.5 liter four cylinder diesel. The Grand Kangoo goes on sale in Europe next month. There's an automotive turnaround taking place. No, I'm not talking about GM, Opel, or even Peugeot. Bloomberg reports Palladium is set to storm up the charts. Last quarter was the worst performing precious metal on commodities exchanges. But the shiny silver element could turn into a segment leader. Even though it's had a rough ride, investors predict it will become number one by the end of the year. In the final quarter of 2011, Palladium was trading at about $850 per ounce, but since then, prices have fallen more than 30%. The drop is attributable to slowing car sales in China. Despite the country's cooling, automakers keep using more and more of this stuff. The transition metal's primary use is in catalytic converters. There's expected to be a shortage this year as Russia limits supplies. South Africa, another major producer, is projected to have the lowest output in years. General Motors an innovation leader in the U.S.? Yes. Last year it was ranked number one in the automotive transportation sector by the Patent Board, an organization that tracks this kind of stuff. Moving to Europe, Peugeot Citroën takes the crown in France. PSA published more than 1,200 patents last year, 85 more than it did in 2010. It's interesting that PSA can deliver all of this innovation, yet still be in a terrible financial position. You can thank French tax incentives for that. China's roads are like the Wild West. They're congested with inexperienced motorists and hordes of pedestrians. Driving a bus must be one of the most stressful jobs in the country. But it's just gotten worse. Drivers in Xinhua have been instructed to stop crashing into expensive cars. Recently they were shown a poster with logos of different luxury automakers and their corresponding price tags. Apparently it's still okay for them to plow through inexpensive vehicles so watch out if you drive a Geely. After the break, my secret recipe for the ultimate sports car. Clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Why? Higher take rates, lower cost of ownership, longer range and better fuel mileage, lower CO2 emissions. Clean diesel, good, economical, functional. Bosch, invented for life. If I were to build my vision for an everyday sports car, a 3,000 pound design forward mid-engine machine, I would go shopping for the magical ingredients that make the great machines of the world, well, great. Since design is the ultimate initial product differentiator in this business, 
I'd give GM's Ed Welburn a call because I appreciate his feel for what makes design work and what makes it exciting. The power, as good as the engines are these days from Audi, BMW, Ferrari, Ford, McLaren, Mercedes, Volkswagen, et al. I'm going with the magnificent normally aspirated 7 liter LS7 V8 from GM. And the six-speed gearbox would come from the Audi R8. Yes, I appreciate it sometimes love double clutch automatic transmissions, but if it's my car with my name on it, I will happily be shifting manually. Thank you very much. The steering mechanism would come from the new Porsche 911 because its new electromechanical system is simply the best in the business. And I would dip into the Porsche parts bin for the brakes as well from the current Porsche 911 Turbo. For the suspension, I'm calling up McLaren to see if they wouldn't like to sink their teeth into my little project. The lighting and interior design execution would be left to Audi, and the tires will come from Michelin. The aforementioned sources for these magical ingredients represent car companies that are consistently doing the best work in the automobile business today. But just having a couple of these ingredients doesn't guarantee success in this business, because a random set of ingredients is just that a melange of good stuff that looks great on paper but doesn't necessarily hang together as a unified whole. The car companies who separate themselves from the pack are the ones that are gifted at tuning their particular set of magical ingredients to flourish together to the point that greatness follows. The rest, they may score a few notable wins and superlatives here and there, but they never seem to get it together enough to achieve the top plateau. And that's the high octane truth for this Thursday. And since it's the fourth working day of the week, you know what that means. Join me tonight for another episode of AutoLine After Hours. I'll be wrangling a trio of all-star guests, including Mark Phelan from the Detroit Free Press, Gary Vasilash of Automotive Design and Production, as well as Charlie Vogelheim from Response Logics. We'll cover a bunch of interesting topics, plus the biggest news stories from the past week. Check it all out at AutoLine.tv starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. Do not miss it. Again, I'm the auto extremist, Peter DiLorenzo. Ciao for now. <laughs>